You know how when like an older person tries to use the hip new terms of the younger generation and just comes off sounding? That's how you sound to scientists a lot of the time. Can you prove that stars are actually hydrogen atoms fusing together and not balls of really, really hot honey butter? Well, no you can't. That's the problem with the proof. It implies finality, that something is settled. Which is why scientists like evolutionary psychologist Satoshi Kanazawa argue that proof doesn't really exist in science, only in something like math or logic. Instead, science deals with evidence, and we can always be swayed by new evidence from, say, the honey butter star probe. Here's a quiz for you. Define the word quantum. And don't try to use your quantum consciousness to intuit the answer. The poor quantum world has been hijacked by self-help authors who've taken over these words to package mysticism in sciencey sounding terms. And even off of the self-help shelf, the word gets manhandled quite a bit. Like a quantum leap, for example, is a huge improvement, right? The weird thing is, on the quantum level, we're talking about the smallest particles available. A quanta is the smallest indivisible particle of energy. So a quantum leap should actually be the smallest leap available. Here's one for you. If you added $17,000 to your salary every week, that'd be some serious exponential growth, right? Well, it'd be pretty awesome, but no, that wouldn't be exponential. See, the term exponential is often equated to really rapid or really huge. And it is true that exponential growth can often get really big, really fast. But in the strict definition of the term, the size or rapidity of the growth is actually irrelevant. Put simply, exponential growth is just when a whole number increases in proportion to itself. So say you have $17,000 in a savings account instead, and it earns 1% interest per year. The next year when you earn 1% interest, that amount will be more. Why? Because you're earning interest now on not just the original 17,000, but the additional 1% you earned last year. Your 17 grand has just increased exponentially. If you want to see a scientist pull out her hair, tell her that gravity or evolution is just a theory. In everyday use, a theory means something like an idea or a belief. Like your buddy who has that theory that chili cheese is the greatest flavor combination humans have ever come up with. Scientifically speaking, a theory is an explanation for why something happens. You can think of it as uh, what happens to a hypothesis, which is a testable guess at an explanation, once it graduates to the next level. This explanation has withstood scientific experimentation and has been found to hold water, so it becomes a theory. So your buddy with the chili cheese theory? That's an opinion. Which misused word drives you up the wall? Let us know in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe. And to learn about other science terms we're constantly mangling, check out 10 scientific words you're probably using wrong at HowStuffWorks.com.